Hey everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be bringing you my December wrap up. So that is little mini reviews of all of the books that I read in December. I have 10 books to talk to you about so I'm just going to get straight into it. And I'm going to start with some of the Christmassy books I read because, you know, we're into the new year now. By the way, hope you had a Merry Christmas and a very nice new year. Um, but so listening to me talk about Christmas books isn't all that relevant anymore so I'm going to get those out of the way. So every year Caroline Duffy, who is one of my favourite poets of all time, um, uh, for quite a few years she released a little um, small Christmas poem and I read two of these in December. Um, the first one I read was Dorothy Wordsworth's Christmas Birthday and this is kind of what it says on the tin. It is the story of Dorothy Wordsworth's Christmas Birthday and it's just a lovely little tale about um, what Caroline Duffy's imagining of this figure gets up to. And I really enjoyed the other literary figures that show up in this book, um, like Samuel Taylor Coleridge, for instance. I probably enjoyed this one a little bit less than I have um, with other ones of these books that I've read in the past, but nonetheless, I would really recommend it um, if you're looking for a Christmas read uh, next year. This second one I enjoyed a lot more. Um, this one is a Bethlehem and it, again, pretty self-explanatory. This is the nativity story about the birth of Jesus. And I enjoyed the style of this one a lot more. Um, it was more rhyme heavy um, than the previous one. And um, there was a lot of really cool wordplay, um, which if you are familiar with Caroline Duffy's poetry, um, will be familiar to you. It was really interesting to see how she adapted the story um, while staying true to its origin, I suppose. So yeah, two really nice little Christmas reads. Don't take very long to read at all. Next up, I have Around About the Christmas Tree, a miscellany of festive stories edited by Becky Brown. Uh, this was very kindly sent to me by Book Break by the folks over at and Macmillan. Uh, so a big thank you to everyone there. Um, this one is part of the Macmillan Collector's Library um, with the sort of iconic uh, gilded edges. It's such a beautifully put together book um, and it's it, it's essentially just a, an anthology of uh, Christmas festive stories from various classic writers. Um, we've got Charles Dickens in there, uh, Hans Christian Andersen, we have L.M. Montgomery, um, so authors that I'd read from before but also quite a few writers who were new to me. I read this very gradually over the Christmas period, you know, reading um, a Christmas story here and there and what's really great about having an anthology like this around Christmas time is like you, you might only have like five minutes here to read and then maybe like 20 minutes there it was really easy to squeeze these stories in around the busyness of the festive period. Yeah, I really enjoyed reading this one. I also have a couple books which aren't necessarily Christmassy, but I think benefit from being read around that time of year, but you don't have to read them at that time of year. So I have Watership Down, which is retold by Frank Cottrell Boyce, uh, based on the original tale by Richard Adams. Uh, so I read the original Watership Down a few years ago at university and I kind of wasn't that keen on it, but I really enjoyed uh, this adapted children's picture book version. I really enjoyed the narrative framing of it. Um, this has been adapted to go alongside a BBC miniseries of Watership Down, which uh, was beautiful. I think it's also on Netflix or gonna be on Netflix. It's a story about a group of rabbits that find themselves in a threatening and dangerous situation and it's about the bravery they show. It's about how uh, human beings interfere in nature. I read it out loud like I do with all children's picture books and I think if you have got a little one in your life um, they would really enjoy this but equally uh, if you've read the original Watership Down or you just enjoy children's picture books as an adult, I would really recommend this one as well. And this was also sent to me by Pam McMillan, so once again, thank you. The first novel I'm going to tell you about is One Day in December by Josie Silver. Um, while the title has December in it, you don't necessarily need to read this one. In December, it, it spans uh, quite a few years, I think it's like 10 years. Um, and the story takes place at various points throughout the year, but um, particularly significant moments happen in December and it all kicks off in December. I've seen this one gaining a lot of popularity recently, um, especially because it was um, the December pick for Reese Witherspoon's book club, and I love uh, how Reese Witherspoon engages with um, novels and literature. I think I just really trust her recommendations, um, and I really enjoyed this one. This begins one day in December, as the title suggests, and we have a young woman named Laurie who is sat on a bus, um, a really crowded bus, and uh, she spots this guy 
through like the frosted up uh, window and they make eye contact and she, she has this overwhelming urge to get off the bus and you can see he's starting to make a move to get up as well. But the bus drives off and she cannot forget this momentary connection that the that she had with him and it becomes sort of a running joke um between her and her best friend sarah that they need to find bus boy and they do but not in the way that they would have hoped because one year later sarah is so excited to introduce laurie to her new boyfriend and the moment laurie sees jack she realizes that he is bus boy he also realizes who she is and has spent a Bit of time thinking about her too um, but neither of them realized that the other person knows. The book flicks between their two perspectives and we see the very complicated feelings that they have for each other and um, the feelings that they have for other people in their lives. We see the friendship between the pair getting increasingly um, complicated. I really believed in these characters like they felt really genuine to me. Um, I really understood why they took some of the questionable uh, decisions that they do. I really loved the friendship between Laurie and Sarah and I think really that was my favourite relationship in the book, not the various romantic relationships that occur throughout um, the decades this novel covers, but the friendship between them was really at the core of the novel and I found that really really beautiful. It's the kind of friendship that uh, as a girl you really really want. The only thing I didn't really like about this book was the ending. The ending really spoiled it for me. Um, I can really see this ending working in a film and I think it's um, highly likely that we will see an adaptation uh, to the screen of this book. I think it really lends itself to that and I think the ending of the book would look, work a lot better on screen. In the book it came across um, like it was trying to be very Hollywood and it was very rushed as well. That was the only thing that I didn't really like about this book. Um, I'm going to be uploading my favourite books of the year list in a couple days and I think if it wasn't for that ending this book probably would have made an appearance on that list but um, unfortunately the ending just really wasn't for me but nonetheless I would really recommend it as a lovely cosy romantic read. Next novel I read was Anatomy of a Soldier by Harry Parker. This is a story that is told in such an interesting way. So this tells the story of Tom Barnes who is in the British troops, he's a soldier and he is injured in battle and he loses both of his legs and it follows um, how that happens and his period of rehabilitation and recovery but what is really interesting about this book is the narrative style of it because it is told through 45 different objects um, so it is narrated by like his boots and his gun and his bed amongst various other objects. I found it really interesting to look at the perspective of these objects, you know, what are they able to tell the reader but what are they not able to convey. I found um, the balance between that really interesting and some objects had a um, a wider point of view than other ones um, but overall I thought it was fairly balanced. I wasn't too interested in the plot of this novel, I don't particularly like uh, war novels, um, they just don't really engage me that much. But objectively, I think how the novel dealt with that was done really well. Um, the author has quite a similar experience to his protagonist. Um, he was a soldier and he also went through similar injuries to the protagonist. All of that feels very unflinching and true to life and I thought it was really well written and I really enjoyed seeing that really um, unique narrative style. So if that's something that interests you then I would highly encourage you to pick this up but also if you really like war stories I think this one is really unique um, and I think you would get a lot more out of this book than I did because I'm not a particularly big fan of uh, stories about soldiers. I also read Normal People by Sally Rooney and spoilers this is going to be on my favourite books of the year list. I absolutely loved this book. It ticks so many of my boxes. So it begins with um, Cunnell and Marianne uh, while they're in secondary school. Cunnell is very popular in school um, whereas Marianne um, blends into the background a bit more. She's not that popular. That real distinct difference between the two of them there but there's also um, a class imbalance between the two of them. So Cunnell's mother is employed by Marianne's mother to clean their house and an unlikely friendship begins to form between Cunnell and Marianne um, when he comes to pick up his mother from work. 
gradually that friendship um, turns into a sexual relationship, but they never quite make it to boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, the friendship between the pair of them gets um, increasingly complicated, it fluctuates throughout the novel. We follow them as they go off to university, uh, to college in Trinity College Dublin, where Marianne becomes way more popular than Connell, who is kind of seen as this like awkward country boy. Um, and we follow them even beyond university as well. What I really loved about Sally Rooney's writing style was that she says just as much through what these characters don't say to each other as with what they do say to each other. There is so much depth to what is left unsaid between these two characters. There is so much careful and nuanced observation about human interactions and relationships. I cannot praise this book highly enough, I absolutely loved it novel I read was a classic one and I read Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. Over the past few years I have been challenging myself to complete all of Jane Austen's books and this was the last one I had to go and I was determined to finish it by the end of the year. Um, this probably isn't one of my favourite Jane Austen books but I'm really glad I read it nonetheless. I found it really entertaining. As was familiar to me from other books that I've read from the period and other Jane Austen books. Um, this book begins with a young woman who finds herself in circumstances uh, and situations where she's a little bit unsure of herself, where she's interacting with people uh, that she hasn't had to interact with before, where she's learning new social customs, she's going to um, live with people that she hasn't lived with before in a new place. One of the social circumstances which our protagonist, Fanny Price, finds herself in in this book is with the arrival of Mary and Henry Crawford. They arrive from London and they have this sort of um, like dazzling charisma, they're very flirtatious um, and everyone seems kind of overwhelmed by the pair of them apart from Fanny who is just quite unfazed by them. I really enjoy how Jane Austen uses um, a character in new situations in order to um, satirise those situations, in order to slightly poke fun at them. One of the elements of this book that I really enjoyed was that of the play. Um, they are rehearsing a play at various points throughout this novel and um, the characters are kind of, some of the characters are using that as an opportunity to have like flirtatious, I want to say undertones, but like overtones. Great look at how um, people perform different roles and they perform attractiveness and flirtatiousness. I think with this Jane Austen novel more so with any of the other ones that I had read, um, I think I really would have benefited from analysing this in quite an academic way. There was a lot in this book that you could really unpick and analyse, particularly if you put it in the uh, context of what Jane Austen was trying to say and trying to respond to. So if you are someone that really likes to dig deep and analyse your reading for pleasure, then I think this would be a great one to pick up. The poetry collection that I picked up in December um, was also a classic read. I picked up the sonnets of William Shakespeare. I had read quite a few of Shakespeare sonnets throughout my education, throughout secondary school and university. I don't really get on with a lot of the old male sonnet writers. I find they're kind of like um, capital letters nice guys um, who feel like if they just pay women compliments then sex falls out. <laughs> like as if they think if they compliment a woman or show any attention to her then they are um, necessarily owed attention and affection back which is not how it works. But I always liked Shakespeare's sonnets a lot more because I felt like they had a lot more nuance to them than that. I found that they were about a wider range of themes. If they were about love, which they often are, they were looking at them in a slightly more nuanced way. Um, so I was really glad that I read the full collection of these, read lots of them that I'd not read before. And the final book I'm going to talk about today is a non-fiction book and it is What Would the Spice Girls Do by Lauren Bravo. This is quite um, an analytical look at pop culture, specifically the pop culture surrounding the Spice Girls, um, their rise to fame, um, their sort of global superstardom in the 90s, the impact that had on um, like girl power and feminism. I'm very cautious about hailing the Spice Girls as like feminist icons, but I definitely think they are like 
gateway feminists. The author has interviewed a plethora of people about what the Spice Girls meant to them, about the impact that the Spice Girls had on their relationships with their selves and their relationships with um, womanhood. It takes a look at why the Spice Girls were so successful as a brand and it also like analyzes their song lyrics and what the song lyrics um, were telling people about what it was like to be a woman. And in between the more analytical sections there are kind of just um, like funny little bits and pieces like there was one section um, that is like Spice Girls for the modern age so there's like Snowflake Spice and Whistleblower Spice and Self Care Spice and Vegan Spice and Shy Tory Spice which that one is probably what the actual Spice Girls are. <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Obviously, if you are a massive Spice Girls fan like me, you're going to devour this and really enjoy it. But equally, if you are interested in um, music history and um, analyzing pop culture, I think this would be a valuable read as well. I really enjoyed this one. So that's it. They are all the books that I read in December. Do let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. Good thoughts, bad thoughts, I want to hear them all. Um, so yeah, that's all from me today. I do hope you guys are having a wonderful new year and I will talk to you in my best books of 2018 video in a few days.